I have been down with the sickness, if you see what I did there, Matt. Uh, a big disturbed fit? No, it's just, I, I was sick. I just thought I'd throw that in there. I was going to say, I didn't remember that. It was going to stupefy me. Welcome back to another episode of the Face for Wrestling video podcast. I'm Waldo. I'm the Matt. I'm Dr. The Wife. And I sincerely apologize. This month that we just skipped is all of my fault and totally not Matthew's this time. Well, Matt, how's it been going? Yeah. Dr. The Wife, how's it going? It's going. A lively bunch we have this uh, show. Uh, It's been one of those months. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. It's just we've been really busy, that's all. We're still at the Osaka World Pavilion on January 5th, this time for an evening show that kicked off at 5 p.m. with an attendance of 2.15. So it seemed that five people from earlier got caught outside after the doors closed for this show. They knew what they were risking by not making it back in time, so that's on them. We have another stack card that is similar to what we had earlier in the day with an opening singles match and five triple tag matches. However, the first two triple tag matches aren't in the tournament, and the main event will be the tournament winner. Yep. Our opener is a singles match with Jamie Hayter going up against Sadie Gibbs. You're still saying Sadie like she's just like some emo person. Sadie says, so today I have a singles match with Jamie. She's been to Japan before. This is my first tour, and Jamie's style is very similar to mine. We're both very aggressive, hard-hitting, so let's say it's going to be a very back-and-forth match, and only one of us is going to be coming out on top, and that's not going to be Jamie. Yep. Jamie says, here we are in Osaka. Again, I beat Bobby in my first match, which we all knew was going to happen. Sorry, Bobby, but it's true. Pretty easy. But I have Sadie Gibbs this evening, and she's a bloody beast. But I'm confident in my ability, and I know what I can do. And I know what she can do. I watched her on YouTube. I thought that was a pretty funny line. So I'm confident I'll kick her ass and take the W because that's what I do best. These promos, man. I hate to say it, but Sadie was right above funeral level, and Jamie only did better by cutting down the repetitive words. I thought it was funny that she's like, I don't even know this person. I had to look her up on YouTube. I I joke about the funeral thing because I'm not trying to give her grief about a promo, but her theme music makes me really feel like I am at one. Uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna circle back to our promos, but yeah, the worst theme in wrestling. Jamie comes out with the rest of Oedo Tai, and both entrances are really quick for stardom. Thank you. Yep. Introductions are going on, and we have middle aged ref with us again for this show. I kind of feel bad for the ladies as their applause was tepid at best, and no streamers to be found anywhere. Yeah, and uh, we got some Jamie chants, but it was from. Oh, idiot, not the crowd. So basically what you're saying is, is that everything just matched up just right. The I promo was about there. the same as the reaction from the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we get the opening bell and Oido Tai wake up the crowd as the ladies get into a collar and elbow lockup. It is the longest collar and elbow lockup that I have ever seen in all of wrestling. It sure ever, was. A Randy Orton match? Uh, not only did they lock up, they rolled out of the ring in the ring they were all over the place with this collar and elbow amazing both ladies worked their way around the ring and i'm not sure if this is the first time i've seen anything like this it finally gets broken up as sadie rolls back inside as jamie is coming she gets hip tossed by sadie and middle-aged ref looks like he's doing a dance routine at this point this is probably one of the slowest and most quiet matches we've ever reviewed too especially for stardom i don't know what to make of this as they're doing a standoff and trying to shake hands and then going back and forth. I mean, th- this match was, yes, a match. Sadie does wake up the crowd with her flying headbutt tackle into the corner onto Jamie. I think Sadie was trying to follow up with a sling blade to the outside, but it was more like a plastic knife. Damn. <laughs> Sadie is back on the outside, and Jamie manages to involve the crowd for her flight out there. 
It looked nice, but it was on the far camera. So yeah. it kind of looked awkward. That's it? <laughs> Making it sound like it was a late flight. They mug each other outside the ring, and Sadie just muscles a powerbomb into the ring apron onto Jamie. Didn't Holiday talk about this being the hardest part of the ring? <laughs> Every ring announcer ever has talked about it being the hardest part of the ring. The powerbomb did look good, almost too good. It looked a bit painful. It was very snug. Yeah. And I have in my notes here for this part of the match, grunting headlocks. Yeah. Followed by Jamie makes the ropes and Sadie gives us a clean break. Now the tables are turned as Jamie puts on a headlock on Sadie for more grunting headlocks. Yep. Jamie rolls out from Sadie's standing moonsault and is right on top of Sadie with the knees to the back. When Jamie whips Sadie into the corner at around 10.50 in the match, it sounded like something broke the ring, mm -hmm. but it was the Oedotai sign falling down and Natsu quickly recovering it. Beautiful and safe snap suplex into the corner from Jamie to Sadie with follow-up knees to the face. Lots of back-and-forth moments in this one, but it does bring a nice double-kick knockdown spot, but it looks like both ladies are looking for a tag in a singles match. Why not? Sure. Jamie is up first, and both ladies trade belly-to-back suplexes. We get some more back and forth until the bell rings at 10 minutes for a time limit draw. It's not the worst match I've ever seen, but it wasn't the greatest. I, this, I didn't think it was that bad. This went down like it was a grudge match, though. But there was yeah. no grudge in it, so I'm not really sure what to make of this. Yeah, I didn't think it was bad. It, it was kind of out of place. I also feel like... And this is a circling back to the opening promo by Sadie, who said that they were evenly matched and everything was even. And then, like, it went to a draw. It was like, did they tell her the end right before she did her promo and she couldn't think of anything else? Yeah. Next up is the first of two triple tag matches that involve teams already knocked out of the tournament. We have the team of Kiku, Konami, Azumi, and Momo taking on the sisters of Hanan, Hina, and Rina. Yeah, we shoot back, and Hana says, it's the Osaka Nighttime Show. Rina says, we lost in the tournament earlier, but we will work together and beat QQ tonight. Let's go, oh. We then shoot over to Konami, who says, so we lost in the first round today, but we'll leave it to Viper, B, and Utami to win it all for QQ. And now we face these Chibis, a bunch of kids. A trios match versus the Chibis, but we won't lose to these kids. They'll be facing young wrestling royalty, so we'll beat them handily. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the Chibis. What What is that? I I don't know. So basically, it's another way to to identify cute little anime characters. So you would have, for example, big Goku looking great, and then you would have a mini cute version, a little plushy looking type. You know what I mean? Got you. So he's no, like the kid version. Got it. Basically. Azumi references that the sisters are kids. Calling the pot out there, aren't you, Azumi? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they did say that they are young royalty, so y yeah. Yeah, but she's also making it seem like they're not really a threat by saying that, you know? Yeah. I'm just going to say yeah a lot in this one. <laughs> the sisters go straight in as Momo is getting introduced and start with the dropkick train. Rena rolls Momo into the middle of the ring for a pin attempt, but middle-aged ref Ain't even going for the count. The hell here, middle-aged ref. Whose side are you on there? The fans? His own? As Rena picks Momo up, Momo just lays her out with a cross body kick. But she's quick enough to trip Momo, and she's going for the tag, and Hanan and Hina are in as well. QQ finally get things settled as they come in to drop kick the sisters. Momo stays in for a little bit to give some payback to Rena. She tosses her over in the QQ corner for Azumi to have a go at it. Man, Azumi is kind of rough with the hair pull in here. Yeah. Rena starts her elbows to mount a comeback against Konami. Nope. But we do get a textbook hip toss from her to Konami, and that allows her enough time to get a tag into Hina. I think that's what I meant to say here. <laughs> that sounds right. Hina has Konami in the corner with a foot to the throat and is able to see Momo coming in for a drop kick. Hina just moves, and it accidentally is given to Momo. I do have to say, the sisters are always improving here. Yeah, they're getting smarter. Azumi does the same thing, and we get a triple stack dropkick train from the sisters to QQ. It's followed by a two count and some help from Hanan, ending up with a double dropkick to the head of Konami from Hina and Hanan that looked a little bit on the stiff side as well. Hina tries for a side rushing leg sweep, but Konami isn't having it and manages to catch her at armbar number 45 off the ropes. While everyone is all over the place, Konami gets in a dropkick to Hina's head off the ropes. This must have been a receipt for the head kick from her and Hanan. Yeah. Beautiful drop kick into Rena into the corner from Azumi. And they are having a great back and forth as the rest of QQ comes in to keep it one-on-one. -on -one. Hanan does get tagged in and goes straight to business on Azumi. 
Azumi is getting in some tough looking cross body kicks into Hanan, but can't get the three. Bit of madness, and Hanan gets Azumi into a pin for a two and 99 one hundreds. Yeah, they're really close. QQ starts teaming up on Hanan, and it goes into a questionable two count from Azumi. Oh, wait, was this the one where it was kind of like, or the ref hit the mat, but then counted two? So it looked like he counted three. It was just that initial, I'm hitting the mat to show you I'm counting one. Two. It looked like three, but it wasn't. It was really, it was weird. Yeah. Azumi follows up with three rolling belly to belly suplexes, but it only gets a two. Stereo drop kicks from QQ to Hanan as Azumi goes up top for the flying foot stomp, and that sees her get the three in 832. I think this is the best top rope stomp we've seen as well. Absolutely. This should have been the opener. It was way better and highlighted everyone, and the sisters are always getting better. It was also better paced. I think if you had this and then you follow this up with the slower match, like the crowd would at least been more into it. I don't know. I don't really have a lot with when the sisters are fighting because I kind of feel like they, they get away with a little bit more, you know? Because they children's. Yeah. Our second and last non-tournament <laughs> triple tag is the team of Hana, Bobby, and Mari against Jan of Natsuko, Jungle, and Monster. Hot off her 17th star match in the Tokyo Dome. Um, Sadie is backstage with Hana and the gang. And my goodness, does Mighty have her own shirt now? No. No, she does not. I actually looked this up because uh, I, I didn't understand or know where the, the shirt came from. But Los Perros del Mal, del Mal is a Lucha Libre wrestling group. The name came from a play on the name of the founder of the group, whose name was Pedro Aguayo Jr. So, Pedro del Mal. So, I think the translation is... Um, they're the dogs of evil. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Mari says, well, once again, we are here, the Rude Girls group, and we're going to win here in Osaka. And that's all she said. Yeah, and then Sadie says, for some reason, good evening. These guys have their match tonight. I'll be there with them. Not that they need it. Hana says, we got hit with a Megaton power earlier. Nice reference to the uh, Viper splash. But we aren't going to lose tonight. Bobby says, looking forward to it. That's it. We get then our normal jungle intros, followed by jungle saying, we are in Osaka where we have a day and night shows. We lost earlier, but now is the night show. We'll fight with the passion of Jan. Let's go, jungle, jungle. All right, then. <laughs> yeah, keeping the promo trains uh, rolling. They're not great tonight. Everyone is making their way out, and it's old ref in the ring. I don't know if you noticed this, but when Jan were coming out, the camera kind of pans over to Jungle as she's on the right side of the ring of the hard camera. Uh-huh. And she walks right in front of a speaker stack. That thing is huge. Bit of a ribbon struggle for Monster as it looked like she was expecting to get pelted with them. And she does. <laughs> I'd say this is like the second or third show in a row where someone gets hit in the face with the ribbons. They're aiming for them now. Uh-huh. It's Bobby and Natsuko to start off as they trade arm locks. It leads to a nice rope break and Hana gently tapping Natsuko away. Bobby goes for a test of strength, and Natsuko gets a good round of applause for being able to jump up for it. That's a thing? Yeah. Both ladies tag out as they are evenly matched, and it's Hana and Jungle in to liven things up. I have a question for you. Go on. Was Bobby making her own sound effects? I didn't want to say anything about this, but I was... get the Luger out of her? I, I was a little confused about this. Like, even as she was walking, she was kind of even like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I was like, what is she doing? <laughs> I was the very sequence, confused. Her sequence is just weird. I mean, I don't even know what to say about it. Both ladies tag out, and they are evenly matched, and it's Hana and Jungle to liven things up. Awesome standing jump kick into Jungle as she starts coming off the ropes, and both ladies are expert at using the crowd to their advantage. I was going to say, can you help me with this note? Because I don't remember why I wrote down... Ultimate Warrior, Hana, and Jungle. I have that right here. Okay. Hana channels her inner Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> okay, good. She starts grabbing the ropes and just starts shaking them up and down. And all I heard in my mind was Warrior's music. Right. <laughs> but it all comes to a halt as Jungle just lays her out. Yeah. Hana catches Jungle into an armbar that's then turned into a suplex by doing things. Nice. Yep, wrestling. 
Hana decided she's had enough, and she tags in Mari. Her and Jungle go even for a little until Mari gets the upper hand. But Jungle comes back with some clotheslines. Running off the ropes, Mari lays Jungle out with a foot to the throat. Yep. This was a short exchange between the two ladies, but this is another case of Mari being in a match with someone and me wanting to see a singles match out of it. Like I said, she's come a long way. Or she hasn't even come a long way. I guess she was always this good, but we thought she was going to be bad. She proved us wrong. She just proved us wrong. Monster tries to run the ropes for something, but Bobby was right there for a reverse STO. Yes, kind of. As Bobby and Monster are getting into it, you can kind of catch a glimpse outside of the ring of Jan going at it with Mighty, Hana, and Sadie. Bobby hops onto the back of Monster with a sleeper, and Hana and Mighty are in to stretch Jungle and Natsuko. During that, Monster taps out to Bobby at 710. Yeah, I just have sleeper... And three question marks, because it was like, wait, what? <laughs> this match was quick. Yeah, it came out of nowhere. Did you notice that Mighty was wearing a different shirt for the match than she was in her promo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't notice the shirt when she was doing the promo. I'm glad both of you did. That's why there's three of us, man. This match didn't waste a lot of time and made sure that everyone that needed focus got it. Yeah. There's no horsing around in this show either, because it's already the semifinals of the trios tournament, and the first match sees stars of Arissa, Tam, and Sucky go up against the team of the other stars of Starlight Kid, Natsumi, and Alex. Yeah, we shoot over to Alex, who says, the sisters were tough, but we're ready for our second match. Were they? Were they? Not to steal your thunder here, but Alex starts off the promo first, and by, she refers to the Hana, Hina, and Rina as the sisters. Uh -huh. See, I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, then Starlet says, we beat Hana and her sisters to make it to the next round. If we win here, we go to the finals. Yes, yes you do. Uh, so let's do our best. And then Natsumi says, let's do our best. Simple, to the point. We shoot over to the better stars locker room, where Savior Saki says, Tam picked up the win in round one, and these two were actually able to get along. Tam disagrees with that fact. Tam says, next is the semifinals. It's a star showdown. The same unit. We can't let them beat us. Arissa says, that's right, let's win. Tam says, not with you. Arissa says, let's win. Tam says, I guess it's okay. Saki says, let's win and go to the finals. And then they all say, let's win. Is this the first promo where Saki said a decent bit? Uh, it's been a while for Saki, yeah. Typically, they focus more on the Tam Arissa thing, or Mayu does all the talking. Because she's awesome. But um, since, you know, Mayu's out at the moment, Saki got to speak up a little bit more. As Arissa, Tam, and Saki are up on the ropes during their entrance, you can see Tam glare at Arissa while she's throwing rubber duckies into the crowd. People, pay attention here. I need to know what's up with these ducks. Someone tell us. Also, I don't think Tam is the one you need to worry about here. Saki. Is going to help lead them to victory. I'll be damned. Miss Yuri announced Alex from Texas this time. Hell yeah. As she should. Middle-aged ref is back in and can't manage the streamers. He's far too inexperienced for this. Yeah. All the stars trade handshakes and get us started with Saki and Natsumi for the semifinal face-heel match. Face-face match. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to notice some wonderful edits from this show. <laughs> <laughs> Quick shovey match with taunting from Saki, ending with a stellar dropkick to Natsumi. Natsumi manages to trip Saki up, and Kid and Alex are there to assist. A failed pin attempt sees Alex come in to give it a try, and Saki just works her over for Tam to come in. As she's trying to whip her across the ring, Alex holds on to the ropes, and Kid uses the opportunity to try to get one over on Tam. Tam smarts her way out of it, and we get the DDT, reverse DDT to them both, which is always awesome. Love that spot. And this is one of the cleaners, like, she's able to pull it off. Back to just Tam and Alex, and Alex jumps off the second rope from a whip to fly into Tam. Kid quickly comes in and physics her way to get Tam into the corner. Tam does manage to stop an incoming Kid into the corner, but after some quick reversals, Kid finally gets the dropkick in. I'm not sure what all happened here wrestling i had a problem at this point in the match that i'll just summarize with this and that's tam just ended whatever this was going on with with a pko that's all you needed these ladies work so well together and don't miss a beat at all so yeah. sometimes when they're in a match even if they're slowing it down a good bit it's just so fluid 
that you're not really sure what's going on, and it looks amazing. Well, see, and I like the fact that, for me, what I got from it is they have, they know they have to fight another match tonight if they win, so therefore slowing it down and saving some of your energy for the finals makes sense. Elbow trading back and forth as they try to slow it down. Slow is relative for Tam and Kid, and it quickly picks back up. Yeah. Tam lifts Kid into a sidewalk slam, and Arissa is tagged in. Some little taunting kicks from Arissa, and Kid reverses a whip into the ropes. But Arissa quickly overcomes it and lays poor Kid out. Yeah, I don't know why people keep trying to have kick fights with Arissa. It's never going to work out. Arissa's working her way up to the top, and stars, all of them, work to keep it one-on-one -on -one in the ring. Kid brings Arissa back down to the mat and delivers a nice single leg underhook suplex, but it only gets a two. Hang on a second. Did this two count kick middle-aged ref's ass? Did you see him flip flop out of this count? He, he was trying. He was trying to steal the show a little bit there. What is going on here with him? Is he having a seizure? Maybe. Kid has Arissa down on the mat and she goes up to the second rope for a frog splash and back up again for a moonsault. Everyone is all over the place again, and when it's cleared up, Kid goes in for the tag. Arissa's going for a tag, too, but no one is there. And that allows Natsumi to come in and work Arissa over. A Hirokurana from Natsumi allows Alex to deliver the 979 and for Kid to fly from the top with the spinning frog splash after Natsumi set it up for her. Bicycle kick from Natsumi to Arissa, and the wrestlers are moving faster than middle-aged ref can keep up with. After the spinning frog splash, he thought Kid was going to go in for a pin, but she knew that Sumi was the legal wrestler. So the wrestlers are more on top of it than the ref here. Well, I mean, wouldn't you be distracted as well? I, w I wouldn't even want to be in the ring, so... <laughs> yeah, just wait for somebody to pin somebody and then attempt to cover. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> From a distance. <laughs> yeah. Roll-up trading between Arissa and Natsumi, and it looks really good. Arissa misses a flying crossbody kick, and this allows Kid and Natsumi to hit stereo drop kicks. But after a quick exchange, Arissa manages to sink it in and go up top to hit the flying stutter kick onto Natsumi. Everyone is in to break up the pin. Did you see Tam lay Kid out during that? Jesus. Tam has no chill. It was weird, too, because I was so happy to see the flying stutter kick, and then yeah. Kid just got laid out. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what she does to her friends. I love you. Whack. <laughs> yeah. Another stutter kick from Arisa to Natsumi, and that's enough to get the three in eight minutes even. And Saki finally deciding to show back up only when her team has won. Where has she been this entire match after she first tagged out? I bet you she was just relaxing and plotting while everyone took the hard hits for her. Damn you, Saki. As I said, conserving her energy for the finals. Damn good match. It had a yeah. lot going on in a short amount of time. If I had a DeLorean, I'd go back and tell them to shave about 10 minutes from the first match and sprinkle it out through the show, yeah. specifically this card. Wait a minute. Wasn't the first match only about 10 minutes? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, my only complaint with this match is they probably should have ended it with the top rope sutter kick, but that's just nitpicking at this point. Our second semifinal match is the team of QQ. B, Utami, and Viper against Oidota of Kegetsu, Hazuki, and Natsu. This card just keeps getting better and better. So we shoot back to the back where Viper says, Here we are. We made it through the first round. Today, we're wrestling Oidota. Viper says, They have a long hair Stevie Lewis. That didn't sound right to me, so I went back and re-listened, and she actually said, They have a long history with us. B says, Yes, they do. Viper says, But we know all their tricks, and... At the end of the day, we're going to make them bow down to the queens. I was really confused for a second because I didn't know what a long-haired Stevie Lewis was. But Viper's getting a little bit cleaner on her promos. And then, Odeo Tai raps. Rapid rock rustling of stardom. Begin. Odeo Tai. Oh, 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 Tai. No, it's Odeo Tai, dude. We've been over this. Yo, yo. I 
I have a feeling that we may have more epic rap wrestling of stardom soon. Yeah, it could be a thing. I know Oyo Tai came out earlier, but I'm glad they saved the dance for this match. Yeah. And I was impressed as always when Kagetsu and Hazuki come out with their titles. But I keep forgetting how many titles are in QQ right now because Viper and Utami come out with nearly all the belts. Yeah, pretty much Utami has all the belts almost at this point. I want to say around this time on the twatter, it was the pound sign thing of Utami, all the belts. Mm -hmm. Did you notice QQ hugging before the match? I did not. Is this a new thing? Maybe. Because it looked kind of forced. (laughs) I don't like you guys, but we're going to hug. Old ref must have said to hurry the hell up because Oidotai bolt over to the other side of the ring to start things off with a mugging. Well, there was a really nice moment when they were throwing the streamers and Natsu refused to allow Gorilla to take the streamers from the ring. And then old ref got onto her about it and she had to hang her head in shame. So old ref is probably already done with their tactics. The focus is quickly put on Kigetsu and Viper and everyone dumps outside. The announcer here, my man. Everybody should know to get the hell out of the way, because who is dumb enough to get in that mess? Nobody. Oh, my God. Viper barrel roll into a chair. Poor chair. Utabi and Natsu are in the ring, and we get our first picture-in-picture view during a match since we started our reviews. I liked it. I'm kind of glad they did it, but at the same time, there's so much going on during this match that it's hard to see either one. Yeah, but I kind of like it, and I think they need to do it more if they do this more. Kigetsu and Azuki seem to be floating around Japanese Jack Tunney's table off behind the audience, and that announcer won't shut up. Osaka Crab to Utami in the ring, and Natsu is tapping out Morse code here. But Old Ref is off in the audience trying to get everyone back. Yeah. Did you see him try to five count Kegetsu after whacking Viper with a chair on the outside of the ring? What is that going to do? And after they had already been out there for like 20 minutes. <laughs> back in the ring, and Old Ref is there. How? When? <laughs> everyone else is still off in the stands. <laughs> He's that good. After Natsu gets in the Bronco Buster, B and Viper finally start making their way back. They must have gotten lost because Kegetsu and Hazuki were already back showing us how tag teams were supposed to work. Yeah. Hazuki trips up Utami for Kegetsu to fly in with a jump onto the back. Kegetsu then grabs Utami in a headlock and pulls her hanging on the ropes inside the ring for Hazuki to fly off the top turnbuckle with a kick to the side. It looked painful for Utami, too. Yeah, it did. Hazuki gets the crowd going with her for a nice taunting spot and then to bring in Kegetsu. And she is just toying with Utami. Kegetsu lets her get in some elbows and in return, it looks like Kegetsu was clawing at her face. Out of the corner, Utami stops Kegetsu dead in her tracks and she gets in a tag to Viper, who stands wild while everyone tries to run into her and around her and everywhere else. Viper yep. just stands there. Did you say stands wild? It's the opposite of running wild. Yep. Uh, she works out of a gang beaten by headbutting them all. She goes for a barrel roll inside the ring this time and gets all three in the corner. Off the rope, Viper catches Kegetsu and just tosses her over her head. This was gorgeous. She doesn't yeah. risk it and tags in B, who plants the B's knees to Kegetsu straight away. She was going to continue going after Kegetsu, but Hazuki tries to come in and assist Kegetsu. B quickly turns it around for her favor until whipping Hazuki into the corner. Some physics happens, and Hazuki manages to execute a code breaker to B. Hazuki dumps out right after, and as B is stumbling around, Natsu sails through the air with a crossbody, and it only gets a two and a Viper. Viper B try to play Red Rover with Natsu, but Kegetsu flies in with a double dropkick to stop them. Hazuki and Natsu follow up with targeting B while she's in the ropes. The second half of this match is showing us how well Oedota works together. Yeah. Just when you think you have one of them down, the other one or two is already plotting something to gain the upper hand. As Natsu is using the whip on B, Viper manages to sneak in and drop kicks her. This opens up an opportunity for Utami to hoist her up and set up for B to land the flying stomp from the top. This 
was another move that was picture perfect. Yeah. A failed pin from that sees B hit and hold the code breaker for Viper to land right on top of Natsu. No. No. B takes just a moment before coming back to hit Natsu with the curb stomp, and that gets the three in 9.55. I always enjoy watching B, though. I really do. This match did not feel like 10 minutes. No, nah, it was really well done. And for a match that went outside really early on, it was still a good match to watch. Although yeah. it was all over the place, and we learned that Old Ref can teleport, Natsu was the absolute workhorse of this match and made everyone in the ring look good. I was going to say, again, my only kind of complaint is they would hit the Spike Death Valley Driver, then they hit the Codebreaker Splash, and then they ended it with the Curb Stomp. I probably would have ended it with one of those tag team moves first, but again, that's just nitpicking at this point. As soon as this one is over, we don't even get a break for the pre-match promos, and we are straight into the finals of the trios tournament. Seeing the team of QQ, B, Viper, and Utami, who had just won their match against the stars of Arisa, Tam, and Saki. Yes. Okay, I think I got that right. Yeah, it sounded like you were saying they just beat those people, but you're saying they're fighting them now. It makes sense. It works. I noticed that Arisa didn't stock up on more rubber duckies to toss out. No. And I'm a little miffed at Utami. Yes, it's two matches in a row, but bring your belts out. Viper did. They were probably already out there. Probably. Before the bell, it looks like the stars are going to play paper, rock, scissors to see who faces off with Viper first. They all must have won because they all attacked together. Yep. Is it just me, or is the hard camera slightly off-center to the right? It's a little weird in this match. Yeah, weird. Viper quickly shows them that she doesn't have to put much thought into overpowering the three as she lands a flying crossbody off the ropes. While Viper's getting up, Tam and Arissa roll out to leave Saki alone in the ring with Viper. Good. Evil. Saki does manage to wiggle out of a power slam and whirls her way to locking in the torque wrench. Viper easily works out of it and just slams Saki down. Mm -hmm. Utami is tagged in and she just boots her way through Saki until body slamming her and making her humbell. Tam tries to break it up, but B clears that up. Off the top for double axe handle while Utami holds Saki in place. B grabs Saki and moves her over to the ropes and surfboards her for the hard camera. I'm not really sure what Arissa was trying to do here. Was she trying to kick Saki to freedom? Yes. She uses her feet for everything. <laughs> she just has four feet. <laughs> yeah. Out of the surfboard, and B just lays in a kick to the back. Saki does get a little offensive going as she spider climbs to the corner, out of a whip, and nails B with a hurricanrana. Her offense doesn't last long as she is quick to tag Tam in for assistance. Mm -hmm. Tim looks to start making easy work of B, but Utami tries to fix that. We then get a bit of madness in the ring. Yes, wrestling happens. Lots of reversal from B and Tam in the middle of the ring, and there's not really any wasted movement here either. No. B finally wins the exchange with a knee to the chin of Tam. She puts Tam on the top rope and goes up to land a glancing kick to the back of Tam's head. I'm not trying to trash on it. I'm thankful it was glancing. B yeah. usually lays in these kicks pretty thick, and it would have done a number to Tam if it had been any harder. Yeah. I think this is definitely one of those good examples of a wrestler pulling themselves back a little bit to protect the other person. B needs a breather, so Viper's back in and tries to give Tam a go. Tam tries to land the PKO to Viper, but she just shoves it off. In return, she gives Tam a flying drop kick, and I'm still amazed she can do this. Yeah. Down from that, Viper drags Tam over to the corner and tries to land on her from the top turnbuckle. But thankfully, Tam moves out of the way, and Viper just lands as flat as a board. Ooh. Yeah. Arissa's laying in some crossbody kicks to Viper, and they look like they aren't doing anything at all. By the way, Dr. My Wife, weren't you the one telling me that Holiday was issuing chest slap challenges to civilians at the last Mission Pro show? No, I think it was uh, La Rosa Negra. They might have been Holland Dead, but I know La Rosa Negra gave a couple to some people. You could not pay me enough to do this. No. Oh, man. Thunder Rosa's given a few, too, and people just eat it up. Ugh. You think it's it's horrifying talking about it. You should see that and hear that in person. Those slaps when they hit are just blood curling. <laughs> Arissa runs into Viper to lay in the knees, but as she's celebrating, Viper just walks out of the corner and starts ragdolling poor Arissa. That's all you gotta do. Side rushing leg sweep from Utami to Arissa, and we see Arissa bridge out of a pin attempt, which is always 11 on 10. Yeah, very impressive. As Utami Irish whipped Arissa, she comes off the ropes and lays in a great looking stutter kick to Utami. 
It hasn't been too noticeable up to this point, but that ring is starting to make some noise here. Mm. And not in a good way. No. Flying stutter kick from the top to Tommy, but B is in to break up the pin. After not doing anything all night, Saki finally enters the ring and wrestles some of the match. How magnanimous of her. She was uh, preserving her energy. Smooth-looking double underhook suplex to a Tommy from Saki. It doesn't get the three, and she tries for it again. Utami slightly powers out of it, but fails to take over. It looks like Saki is going for the double underhook for a third time, but she makes it a double underhook power slam. Well done here. That's what happens when you conserve your energy. Edit it out. <laughs> B comes in to try to break up another pin, so we get a little madness from it. Viper is off on the apron and looks gassed here. She deserves a slight break from the wrestling she's been putting on tonight. Yeah. I say that, and then she's in to try to hit a flying crossbody to Tam and Arissa, who are being held in place, but they duck, and Viper hits B and Utami with it instead. Poor B and Utami. It wasn't a surround sound drop kick, but Arissa waited until Viper was getting out of the ring, but she pointed and looked like she was on the same page as Tam and Saki. What, what, what is going on here? Attempts? Uh, yeah. Attempts were made? <laughs> Outside of the ring, and Arissa lays in the stutter kick, and Tam goes flying. It's not too long until Old Rev starts raising his voice, and then they go back inside. Wait a minute. He's been saying stuff all night in English. Yeah. Is this like being a pilot where everyone has to know some English in order to operate? I just know that like most Japanese wrestlers learn to call their matches in English. So it makes sense that the refs would, too. Not really sure what Saki was going for, but Tommy turns it into a choke and then pulls her up into a torture rack. Tam and Arissa try to clean house and help Saki, but B just dumps them back outside and follows them out. After some struggle, Utami delivers a German suplex to Saki. B comes in to soften her up some more with the combo code breaker and running backdrop onto Saki. Utami is back up and goes straight for the torture rack again. She sees Saki after a couple of seconds, and Old Ref has to tell the timekeeper that Saki gave up, giving QQ the win at 11.50. I hope Saki is okay, and it was just the timekeeper not paying attention here. Yeah, it was a little kind of a weird ending. We then get Utami on the mic to say, Osaka, Happy New Year's. B, Viper, and I were able to win the New Year's tournament. Today, Viper and I won together, but at Korakuren Hall, I challenge Viper. I will challenge you with all my might. Well, since QQ won, we will close the show. B is just fun to watch. I pay more attention to her than write anything down half the time. <laughs> so I, I found my new my new favorite wrestler here. For having to wrestle three matches in one day, everyone did a great job here. This is also probably my match of the night as everyone was playing an equal part in it. And it stayed in the ring more than the last one did. Otherwise, the last match would have been it for me. <laughs> I would say, yeah, for me, this one was really good, but the ending was a little weird, and there was just a couple things. I'm going with uh, QQ versus Odeo Tai for my match of the night. See, Dr. not everyone Life. got to see what was going on during that match, oh, except for Japanese Jack Tony. I, I, like I said, I get your point. I just, I liked the chaotic energy of the last match. Dr. The Wife? Uh, I like the one that you just mentioned that was a, a little more energetic. Everything flowed really well, and he was there. And your hill of the night? Uh... I don't really have a heel of the night other, other than agreeing with uh, Waldo and just saying Saki's always a heel. <laughs> I was like, this was not a card built for heels, so there was not a, a super definitive heel of the night. So I'm going for long hair Stevie Lewis. Whoever you are, you sound evil. Waldo? Regardless of how the main event match came out, I am always impressed that the wrestlers can go for more than one match a show. In this case, both of these teams wrestled three times today, and that actually leads me into my heel of the night, which was Saki. As everyone was working their butts off tonight, you kept hiding away, making sure you were well-rested to try to sneak in for a betrayal here. Truly, you are very evil. Betrayal or win? It didn't pay off, but she was just trying to win for her team. Now, I know we try to stay out of the future here, and I don't have this in my notes, and I just wanted to throw this in real quick. As some of you... Most of you, hopefully all of you know that the 2021 Cinderella tournament just took place for stardom. As we are recording this, this is about the first part of April. We are sad to say our final goodbyes in stardom to be, as she announced that she is leaving stardom and Japan and heading back to the other hemisphere. B, 
if you ever get to hear this, we truly appreciate everything that you have done in stardom, and we wish you much success in the future if you so decide to continue wrestling. Oh, yeah, she's definitely going to continue, and she's going to rock it wherever she ends up. And, yeah, props. Oh, it'd be so awesome to see her in person. Mission Pro Wrestling, maybe? Oh, yeah. Make it, make it happen, Thunder. <laughs> yes, please. Pound sign B for Mission Pro. Whoop, whoop. Yep. I'm Waldo, and that's it for me. I'm the Matt. And I'm Dr. The Wife. Be sure to catch us on all the usual places within the social media, at Face for Wrestling on the Twitter and Facebook. Leave a comment below and let us know how we're doing. You can catch the audio version of this episode on SoundCloud and the iTunes. And don't forget to stutter kick the subscribe button here on the YouTubes. Always check out www.stardom-world.com where you can get some amazing wrestling action for only 920 in a month. How much? 920! It's not a lot. Don't forget, everyone is different and everyone is good. <laughs>